Hey guys, Nick Smith here, and today I'm going to be showing you a quick way to fake a Petzval lens effect. Now, I'm not sure if many of you know what a Petzval lens actually is, but it's this old lens design that used to give this swirly bokeh to the background. And recently, Lomography decided to revamp this lens and bring it back to the modern era. But the problem is the 85 costs about $600, and the 50 Eight, I think it is, costs about $700. So if you want to actually use these lenses, you're either going to pay a load of money for a new modernized version, or you're going to have to find a used version, which are decades old. So this is a quick way to actually kind of fake that look with any lens. And this is not perfect. It's not, you know, exactly the same, but it's close enough for most purposes. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to want to select the background, and we can do this in a couple ways. If you are really good with the lasso tool, you can use that, or if you want to be lazy like me, we're going to use the magic wand tool. So we're going to go over here, and then we're going to click here, and we're going to hit the quick selection tool. And uh, I'm actually going to use quick selection over magic wand because I find it's a little more accurate. But now we're just going to quickly paint over the background, and we don't want to do this all at once. We want to just kind of lift up our uh, pen or mouse every now and then to make sure we can undo if it selects too much or whatever, because sometimes what will happen is you'll be going along and it'll select everything in the photo and you don't really want that to happen. So just kind of go along here and just select the background out. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna quick duplicate the background with Control J. And we're gonna do that just so we can like have a preview of what we've selected. So I'm gonna go ahead and hold down Alt and then click this little eye icon and you can see we picked up all of her hair, her face and her arms still along with the background. So I'm going to go ahead and hit Control alt z to undo. I'm going to hold down Alt, and I'm going to paint with the magic wand, or quick selection tool again. And select all around her face and hair. And it looks like it might have actually unselected that. So I'm going to go ahead and release Alt, and then just give it a quick tap. And that should have it pretty much selected. So I'm going to go ahead and duplicate it again with Control j hold down Alt, select that eye icon again, and as you'll see, pretty much nice cutout around the subject. We do have a bit of her hair selected, but don't worry about that too much. It's not gonna matter uh, in the long run. So I'm gonna go ahead and undo one more time with Control alt z So what I wanna do now is I wanna refine this mask. So I'm gonna go to Select, and I'm gonna go to Select and Mask here. And now usually what I do is I just take the radius and put it to about 50. Uh, and I'm on a 22 megapixel camera, so if you're on like a A7R2 or a 5DS or a Nikon D850, maybe you'd want to do about a 100 pixel radius just for this, but all this does is it kind of feathers it out and makes it a little nicer of a selection around the subject. So I'm going to go ahead and hit OK to confirm that. And now that that's confirmed, I'm going to duplicate the layer again with Control J, and let's go ahead and hide that. As you can see, it's a really nice selection here. And we did pick up a little bit, so what we can do is we can hit E to bring up our eraser, and then we can just kind of clean up just a little on these edges, because we don't want it to be too soft there, because it'll blur a little bit, and we can mask that later, but I don't really want to spend too much time on that. So we're just going to go through and kind of do this. All right, and I think that looks clean enough. So let's go ahead and enable that background layer again. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go up here to the filter menu and we're gonna go filter, blur, and then radial blur. And now by default, I believe this will be set at like 10 for the amount, but we're gonna do something more like four. And then we're gonna want this to say blur method, spin, quality, best. And as you can see, that kind of created this weird swirl to the background, which is very similar to what the Petzval lens looked like. Now, this is a little strong. Uh, you can tell it was faked a little too much. So what you can do is you can either lower the opacity to something like 50. Let's go ahead and toggle that and see it's not as dramatic now. And you can still kind of see the original image through it. It just kind of has that added swirl to it. Or the other thing we can do is we can go ahead and undo it all the way back to where we erased, if we go to the history tab, or you know, you can just undo it to that. And then we can go filter, blur, radio blur again, and do something more like three, or you know what, just to show it lessened, we'll do two. So I'm gonna go ahead, okay again. And as you can see, it's much more subtle, and 
it's uh, a little you know tamer I, I think I did like it as a higher amount though so I'm gonna undo one more time and I'm gonna go with three just because I think maybe that was the correct amount there so filter blur radial blur let's do three and this is you know just part of the editing process is undoing and redoing filters until you're happy so I really like the way that looks but as you can see it's affecting some of our hair and stuff like that so we want to make a layer mask so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go down here and we're just gonna click this right here and that's gonna bring that up so now we're gonna hit B for our brush tool and let's hit X on the keyboard to go ahead and switch from white to black and then just paint black over the subject and what that's gonna do is it's just gonna mask it off of the subject so the blur will not affect them. And you can go ahead and do this like anywhere where you see like there's a little overage or it's starting to blur on like the leg or arm or anywhere you don't want it. It's, it's really easy or say you wanted something in the background to still be in focus but blurry everywhere else, you could use this to kind of only select that object. So we're just going through, continuing with this. And if we go ahead and hit that, uh, I seem to have only been on 50% opacity, so that would explain why I had to go over multiple times on certain areas. So we're going to go ahead and switch that back to 100 and then just paint this. Uh, by the way, I hit backslash to bring up this mask where I can actually see the red uh, over what I'm painting. Uh, this is really useful if you want to see where you've painted and you're not 100% sure and uh, if you maybe like me were on a different opacity than you should be, you'll notice it's more of a pink color than a red. Oops, went a little over there. All right, backslash again should hide it. And let's go ahead and preview that. And it's a little on the hair too much there, but it actually kind of just got rid of a bit of the flyaways there So I don't think I mind it too much because if you look see it just kind of clears that up And I think that actually looks pretty good, but I'm gonna dial it back just a little let's say like 80% Actually, how about 70? 75 75 looks good So quick toggle on and off there's before there's after, and that's really all there is to it, guys. It's a really simple technique. It adds a bit of interest to your images, and so if you're just trying to have fun and you want to, you know, play around and see what you can do with Photoshop, this is one of those things that can definitely take an image in a different direction and make it very unique. I hope this was able to help you guys today. If it was, please be sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe if you aren't already. Feel free to share this on Facebook, Reddit, Twitter, any social media you see fit. As long as my work is being shared and people are learning, I'm happy. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time.